Those are the people you take advice from. What is the next step? So I want you to do is I want you to stand up. I want you to put your hands together for Miss Julie Stoyne right there, everybody. So I want to talk about two really big problems that entrepreneurs have. The first is perfectionism. And the one over here is when we try to cut too many corners because we're, because we're in that desperate situation where we're trying to make money and we're trying to get things done fast. It's like growth hacking gone bad, right? We, just, we start creating really crappy foundations for our business. And over here is perfection. This is like obsession. This is when nothing gets launched or you're constantly throwing things away. So products with shortcuts are crappy products. Products with a perfectionistic owner don't ever see the light of day. There are two truths that you have to hold in tension. The first is that you should take action as fast as possible with a minimum viable product and you should not worry about it being perfect. What is on this other zone? This is the other tension. This is the other truth over delivery, excellence, all that kind of stuff. When you can do both well, because they seem like at first they're in competition with each other, right? Minimum viable product doesn't have to be perfect, but I thought we were supposed to over deliver and be awesome and create an, you know, a new opportunity. It can't be improvement, it has to be amazing, right? These two things are both true. They hold in tension, and when you can stay comfortable in that tension, you will be far more productive than if you start to fall outside of that. We just flew over that, and it's a full rainbow now. It literally just got better. And then what happened? And then a uh, cop showed up. Luckily they didn't see anything, right? Luckily they didn't see anything yet. We think we're okay. The rate there. Be cool. We don't look like filmmakers, I think. My name's Miles, and I'm a filmographer. What's your I'm, name? I'm Dan. I'm Dan Usher. I don't wear sunscreen. I love filming cool <laughs> stuff. I fly drones through rainbows and stuff. Made personal privacy quite a bit. Sam, okay. where's Sam? I yeah. My name's Sam. I help him with all the criminal activity that we do when it comes to filmmaking. Today we are in St. Thomas. It's gonna be amazing. There's some really cool things that we're gonna learn about the island, which I have no idea about because I've never been here before, so I'm super stoked to be here. They said some of the trees kill you, so I'm hoping we survive. We're here to get one shot of Russell uh, speaking in line for the 2018 year in review video. The only problem is we're going into this. That's rain. That's a lot of rain. Oh, I pointed it and then I picked up the Okay, above or back? Uh, above. Okay. Which motivates us to do lots of crazy stuff like kayaking in a storm. If you haven't yet, click above to subscribe. Oh. Subscribe. Whoa. It was rad. It was actually pretty cool, man. That was a good shoulder workout for me. Twice I pinched Colette and she thought it was a shark. That was the best part. <laughs> There's crabs all over. There's hermit crabs crawling around. We're about to start the hermit crab race. I want you guys to find a fast crab. You're looking for one with uh, mental toughness and good people skills. Start your engines. In three, two, one, let's go. Come on, monster. Come on, Bagheera. Bagheera. That's a great name, Kel. Country, country, come in and get them. The outer circle, the first one to get to the outer circle first wins. Here's the checkered flag! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! I won! That's my boy! That's my boy! We came here, we kayaked, then we hiked. I took pictures by the blowhole, drenched us all. We got soaking wet, which is a lot of fun. And uh, now we're back. I think we're gonna find something to eat, and then we're back on the boat. So that's the game plan now. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Steven Larson. Thank you very much. Okay, questions invite revelation. 
And a lot of the time, the reason why people are not successful in this is they have no idea what they're trying to solve. If you don't know the problem you're trying to go solve, I'm going to consume everything. I'm going to read everything. I'm going to take in every guru. I'm going to go through every single course. Even though Russell gave us this amazing framework, I'm like, look, pathway, this square, square. There's literally check boxes. I'm still going to go consume all of it. Go on every single Facebook Live. Stop learning everything. Don't learn. I do not learn generally, like in a general sphere, anymore. You have got to know the immediate problem you're trying to solve in front of you. This is cool because it gives you clarity and emotional license to drop off all the other garbage and noise that runs inside of our heads. Nothing else matters. Any other spur of the moment that looks attractive kind of opportunity that pops in my way, no, 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 because I don't know how to solve that yet. Let me get distracted by another course, another thing, another thing, another thing. It's not that they're not helpful. It's that for you to actually make money, it is likely not the answer. Okay? It is what is the next step, right? And then what's the next step? And you're never going to see all of them, ever. I never do. I have an idea of what I want to build this year. And some of it like, just scares the crap out of me. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm really pumped about it. I know where I'm going to go. In between, there's a lot of unknowns. Welcome to entrepreneurship, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Ambiguity land, all right? And so all I do is focus on like the three steps that I, all right, I kind of know the three things I need to do. Great, that means I know everything I need to know. Okay, I have, I have everything I need to do. And I just take that one step. Crap, how do I place that? Book, 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 hunt, 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 hunt. Next step. Okay, and that's how you do that. Okay, I really appreciate you guys and uh, hopefully I was helpful. <laughs> So Russell got his books this morning, he had a huge stack of them and he went out on a speedboat and he hit them personally. Nobody knows where they are. And now we're sailing out as the Two Comma Club, the Two Comma Club Pirates to find these special books and secrets hidden along the Bahamas. We don't know where they are, but it's our mission to find them. <laughs> entire time. Uh oh, damn. <laughs> All right, the cruise ship just landed in Nassau. We just jumped off. We're finding some taxi right now to head over to Atlantis, where we are going to get some videos, have some fun, and hopefully swim with some sharks. What are you up to right now? We're about to go down a water slide that shoots you through a shark tank, an actual shark tank. It's really awesome. Entrepreneurs suck at vacations typically, so that's why we act like we're vacationing while we're making videos the whole time. So people think we're relaxing, we are producing. Memories fade, videos last forever. <laughs> Unless YouTube shuts you down. <laughs> that sucks. Is this the spot, Dan? It works. It's just a bit intense. I hope we don't lose a laptop. All right, checks out. So he's got the he's got his phone with the lines right there on the phone. <laughs> thing into the funnel and it increases how much money you make and how you get more emails. Hey Russell, I got yeah. this. Oh, thank you. Over the years, we've gotten a ton of great feedback from you guys, which is why we've worked hard this year to deliver over 290 updates. Desktop notifications. I don't know where to go. So you're an entrepreneur and you don't use ClickFunnels? I've never even heard of ClickFunnels. Is that like lead pages? <laughs> My first big financial aha was this. It is easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. That was my first financial breakthrough. Any track stars in here? Where are my track stars? That ran track in high school, anybody? What is your name, sir? Brendan. Brendan? Brennan, Brennan, you ran track. What did you run? Triple jump. Triple jump. Uh, four by one. Okay, so I had polio as an infant. I've had a metal brace on my leg my whole life. I did not run track, okay? <laughs> so let's say Brennan and I, we get in a race, and we're going to do a mile race. Can you run a mile? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do a mile. Um, but how many of y'all would agree that it wouldn't be fair for Brennan and I to go the same distance, yes? Yeah. Okay, so, Brennan, you said you can run a mile, right? Yep. Okay, he's going to run a mile. I'm going to go two miles. Oh, crap, I'm so dyslexic. Did I say it backwards? <laughs> I said it backwards. Anyway, but I'm stuck with it because I'm a man of my word. So, how many of y'all know Brendan's going to win? Yes? Right. Brendan's going to win, right? Everybody say unless. 
Unless. Unless Brennan's running and Myron's on a bicycle. Because I said he's going to run a mile, I said I'm going to go two miles. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. I can go farther, faster, and use less energy because you can always make up and leverage what you lack in ability. And so many people go through life trying to improve abilities that they don't have instead of looking for leverage to compensate for the things they don't have. See, what most people won't do is they won't stop running hard long enough to find leverage that can get them to where they desire to go that much faster. So it's easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. But you have to stop running and start looking for leverage. So that's some wealth mindset stuff that hopefully will help somebody. What are you about to do? Oh, we're about to do this funnel right here. Never done this before. We got the four of us boys ready to go. And conditions are a little windy, huh? Oh, it's a bit a windy, windy out here. <laughs> we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. <laughs>
friendships like we made here this week with each and every one of you. Salute. Thank you. You know, a year ago, we first started talking about this, we had this vision like, wouldn't that be cool if we did a cruise? And I was honestly, because the introvert in me was like nervous about it, but now, 12 months later, having it happen and having the experience that everybody, um, I wouldn't change it for anything. We had such a good time, and um, I think everybody grew a ton while being here on the boat. And I think the biggest and the best business partnerships and deals happen in a situation like this, where you can get past the, the formal, like, hi, how you doing, and like actually find out who people are, what they care about, and how you can serve them, how they can serve you, and it just changes the game completely from a business partnership and friendship standpoint. You're able to put your guard down and relax and really connect because you're sharing these amazing new experiences together. I hope that you can put this in your calendar for next year, make it a goal to be on the Two Comma Club cruise because listening and experience will completely change your business and it'll probably change your life as well.